All right, people, Catfish Dave here. It's fall of the year. It's time for bait to start moving back in creeks. Uh, time for some of these fish to start moving back in these creeks. In these reservoirs, these creeks can be big, large coves, and they're very draggable. Some of them are very good size. This one here, I can do a good mile drag just in this one cove. Uh, this cove ranges from six foot deep all the way to 50 something foot deep at the end of it. Somewhere in this cove, these fish will be staged up. This might not be the best section of reservoir to fish for numbers of fish. I don't know. I haven't pulled this thing uh, since last year. So uh, we're going to try it. I've been up in the area catching some bait. So I'm just going to use this old bait I got through in the back of the boat here. We're going to do a little dragon video. Dragon's a great way to pick up these reservoir blue cats in the fall. Out here in the middle of the afternoon, don't matter. We should catch something. Even if there's not that many around, just the fact we're going to scatter some baits and cover some distance, we should come over some fish. It's pretty hard to get skunked dragon baits in a Tennessee River reservoir. These are spread and planer boards that I'm using. A guy named Wesley Mann makes these. They've got this rod right here that if you step on it, you bend it back in place. You can actually tune this board a little bit by what pitch this is. The best way is a slightly down angle. This front clip uh, decides how far from the hook you want this planer board. This back clip is what's supposed to keep the planer board on the line while you're fighting the fish. Now I'm using what's called the speed clip and these occasionally come loose, not a lot. I've had these boards now for six months or so and I've had them come loose maybe four or five times in six months. You just go get them, the board floats, no big deal. The benefit of the speed clip is, you know, I'm not sitting there with that snap lock. It's just a lot easier to take on and off. If you don't like chasing an occasional board, go with the traditional snap lock in the back. This front clip, uh, most people use what they call a twist lock. It's got a lever that opens it up. You close it back up. And with that type of clip, you have to reel the fish in and unlock it to get it to come loose and slide down the line. I don't like doing that. I use a closed pin style, an extremely heavy duty one, and either the fish will knock it loose or I'll give the rod a pop, which will free the board up while I'm fighting the fish. I know you can order these from Spread Them Planer Boards Direct. I believe you can get them uh, Mad Cat's Rod Company sells these things. Tackle Bandit, I believe, carries these things. This is a Dirty South Dragon Weight. There's two types of clips you'll find on these things. I like this type of clip because I like to clip it on a three-way swivel. The other type they make uh, just has a round thing at the top and you clip it on what they call a sinker slide. I like this one better because it stays in one place. Don't slide up and down your line when you stop the boat. That's a Demon Dragon style spook. Uh, this one is actually made by some guy on my Facebook called Size Matters Catfishing. But they do make actual Demon Dragons, uh, which is a good spook they never leak they got nice paint schemes on them uh, you can get those from tackle bandit uh, mad cats has their version of these things and uh, they the, when I used them they were good quality they didn't leak you can use a peg float but a peg float tears up on you every two or three fish and you're constantly replacing those peg floats these are not only more durable uh, they give you the benefit of noise. It's been proven noise can attract fish. 
And to be honest with you, even though these are a lot more expensive, and buying dragon weights is kind of expensive, as opposed to making them yourself, I lose so few of them, I don't mind paying for them. Skipjack are about five days old on ice, and I believe something will eat them. They might just want heads, they might just want chunks, we'll find out. We'll find out how many fish is in here. I'm in about 10 foot of water here, but we're going to be pulling into 40 something, so I want to make sure I've got at least 65 to 80 foot of line out before I put my board on, so when we're in the deep water, I'm still on bottom. When I'm anchor fishing, suspend fishing, I'll use monofilament. But when I'm dragging, I prefer using braid because I've got a lot of line out. And especially on these boards, your line can be in this 45 to 90 degree angle coming off the boat going back. There's a lot of slack that's got to come out before you get a hook set. So I use braid when I'm dragging. Where a planer board shines is, it allows you to spread baits out. The more water you cover, the more likely you're going to find fish. Another benefit of the planer board is when you're dragging like this in shallow water, a lot of times this boat will spook fish. And you'll notice some days you can't hardly get a bite in shallow water behind the boat. Only the planer boards get hit. That's because the boat's spooking fish. So If the fish are in a spooky mood and don't want to hit behind the boat, They'll usually hit those planer boards away from the boat. It's about five o'clock in the afternoon. Good two and a half hours or so before dark, so we've got time to catch a fish. Throw this headpiece behind the boat. I experiment with speed when I'm dragging. Some days they want it slower, some days they want it faster. On the days they want it fast, like .9, that's really a good thing because uh, you're running your boat over more water quicker, coming across more active fish that are willing to hit at that speed. On the days they want the baits creeping slow, well it can take you a while to cover a cove like this. If you cover at point four or five or point nine, you know, you can cover a cove twice as fast going point nine. If that five day old bait don't catch something, I'll cut up one of my fresh ones. If they'll hit that, I'd rather use it. Just means I've got more bait. First time in this cove, it could be dead water. We could pull over to the next one up and just be loaded with fish. Sometimes when you're doing this, the direction that you're dragging can make all the difference in the world on how many fish you catch. I've seen days they'd only hit if you were pulling in or only pulling out. Some days they'll hit going both ways. By pulling out, then back in, we'll find out. It'll take us about an hour to pull out and back in. If we've caught a fish or two, we'll stick around. Oh, yeah. Okay. Out here on the deeper end of this cove, we've had a couple of small bites. Just got hooked up in 29 foot.
The action's a little deeper. But like I say, it's pretty hard to get skunk doing this. Covering so much water. And things could uh, change dramatically on the way back in. This one's coming to the boat. Usually a bigger fish will hit and run to the boat. Real big, just super feisty. Well, I thought he was bigger than that the way he hit. Oh, just an old feisty blue cat. Five day old bait. Oh, lighter colored fish. Man, I thought he's bigger than that when he hit. Just ornery. We still haven't switched directions yet, which could make all the difference in the world. All right, y'all, I have switched directions here. And got hit as soon as I did. Sun is right in the camera. Feisty old fish. Little fatter fish in the first two. Number three got a little more weight on it. Starting out here on the deeper end of this cove, pulling back. Sometimes switching directions can make all the difference in the world. Now we'll probably catch some fish, and that dang sun will be right in the camera. No decent size, what I call fall size fish yet, but here again, this is just a random experimental pool. I haven't been here since last year. I don't know what's in here until I come. One thing about it, even if they're scattered by dragging these baits through here, we're still catching some fish. All three rods are getting hit by smaller fish as we change directions here. One already landed, and like I say, the direction you go can make all the difference in the world. I've picked up my speed a little bit to cover a little more water. Oh, yeah. Did he stick? Yeah, he stuck.
slow this boat down, make them a little easier to reel in. down yeah we're definitely getting a lot more bites like this this feels like a bigger fish right here actually of course I say that about all of them because they're fighting hard That's, that's more like a fall size fish there. There went my planer board. That's what I tell you about. They can come loose every now and then. Yeah. Stop this boat. Yeah, we got a pretty decent one in the net there. Shoot. About lost him too. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. That's more of a fall size fish. Yeah, look at it. down there brother more of a fall size fish yeah get my planer board back like I say they float that's the only deal I have with the uh, speed clip you can put a regular clip on there and not have that problems I don't care, it don't happen enough for me to worry about. I believe he's on there too. Like I say, y'all, going through the same area, but by changing directions, the fish action has definitely increased. Like I say, man, you change directions. And, uh, it can change things dramatically.
This is the bigger of the two fish, so I'll land him first. Uh, you wouldn't have thought there was many fish in here on the way out, but you change directions and everything can change dramatically. I've seen that too many times. There's another one. Most fish have been caught on the planer boards, including the biggest fish today. The good thing about that speed clip, I can take that board right off. This is definitely a proven method for catching these reservoir catfish many times of the year. There's very few days that you can't catch catfish dragging. And in this type of situation here, big wide cove, pretty much the bottom's all the same. No real structure for them to be hanging out. They're just scattered anywhere. This is probably the best way to fish this. These spread them boards come in all different kind of colors. You can get real fancy powder coated colors. But uh, this bar faces the boat. So in other words, this board goes on that side of the boat. This one goes on that side of the boat. Uh, the way this thing's on here, you can step on it, mash it down, mash it up, just take your hand, bend it back. You want it slightly facing down like that for the best performance. This one here is up a little too level. Of course, I'm not using these, but that's how I would run it right there. They're indestructible, they float. Uh, you use them year after year after year. The only thing that will ever wear out might be uh, the clips. You know, of course you can order them online. These are a heavy duty kite fishing clip that I get. Very heavy. Those orange rods I'm using are from uh, Chasing Cat Outdoors. Good all around rod for any type of fishing. Lots of backbone. They do have somewhat of a softer tip, but that backbone kicks in real quick. Lots more bites going this direction. Back rod. Oh, he's pulling some drag. Pulling some drag. Pulling a little drag there. This is the only headpiece I've been using all day is on this back rod. This will be the second fish it's caught.
like we're doubled up again. Oh, yeah. Another fall size fish right there. Not as big as the last one, but not bad. Yeah. Definitely a nicer one. Good head on it. Yeah, he's still on there. from changing directions, y'all. You wouldn't have thought there was a fish in here, hardly. Going one way. Go ahead and stop the boat. Since I got two baits not in the water, Second time we've been doubled up. Mean little fish. Well, all right, y'all. I was down here hunting some skipjack. I figured while I'm here, I haven't been to this area in a long time. I knew it was time for this fall situation to start setting up uh, for these cats. I figured, why not? Let's test this cove out right here and. Uh, best way to do that is spread these baits out, cover it, experiment with speed, experiment with direction, and you can have a pretty good day. Done that with the old spread them planer boards from Wesley Mann, spreademplanerboard.com. I believe Mad Cats carries them. I think it's called Tackle Bandit where I get a lot of my stuff. Dirty South Dragon Weights. The hooks I'm using are called uh, Dell's Tackle 12 Ot. Dell's 12s is what they call them. Offset circle hook. Really good for what I'm doing here. Got some numbers of fish, doubled up a couple times, even a couple decent fish. This is a video. There was fish in the video. That makes it a fishing video. This is Catfish Day with another one signing out. Not a not a bad fish. I'm trying to get out of here so I can go get me one of them old firehouse subs. Dag blasted fish won't leave me alone. Trying to get out of here. Uh, I gotta go get that firehouse sub, y'all. <laughs> 